Wonderful. Yeah. Now, when you have spinal tuberculosis in, uh, uh, with a patient or HIV, or a HIV patient contracts spinal tuberculosis, it's really double trouble because each one makes the other one worse. Now, when the two angels of death meet, we have a major catastrophe. We know that tuberculosis is the cause of death in one-third of patients who have got HIV. And on the other hand, it also aggravates spinal tuberculosis because in people who have HIV, there is a 30% increase in TB. And in many parts of Africa, HIV is the cause for 30% increase in TB. They have more viral load. These patients have more destruction, more complications, more incidence of neurology, and more resistance and refractory disease. But on the other hand, the incidence of HIV is on the increase, and new infections account for 2.5 million people around the world every year. So in wide areas of the world, now these two diseases still hold a big question mark on the uh, livability of the patient actually. Now there are other important differences what HIV does to spinal tuberculosis. Among HIV positive patients, pulmonary tuberculosis is 60% uh, with, uh, with pulmonary tuberculosis. 60% of them develop musculoskeletal lesions compared to only 3 to 5% in HIV negative patients. So that is a big problem. And in these patients, 65% of them have spinal tuberculosis. And what is very important is if you have a child with spinal tuberculosis and pulmonary tuberculosis, you really need to look at it because they have a very high incidence of neurotuberculosis. And when you start an ARV, many of these children have many side reactions. So you have to screen them for a neurotuberculosis also. Now these patients, they have a lot of uh, other problems because they have impact granuloma formation. There is an imbalance in the secretion of pro and anti-inflammatory cytokines and they have a very quick reversal in their CD4 and C, uh, CD8 ratio. And you know, the suppressor cells are very low, so their immunity is low. Now, if you find one focus of infection, you must carefully look for another focus or multiple focus because 60% of them have a multifocus of infection. They can have posterior elements alone involved with large paraspinal abscess, which is a unique feature of HIV-infected spinal tuberculosis, and they also are prone for very rapid instruction. Now, the other thing you should first question you should ask when they have HIV are, is this patient having also a multidrug resistance? Now, the multidrug resistance in these patients are multifactorial because they not only have a pure immunity, but they also have a lot of GI tract problems, which reduces the uh, absorption of the drugs. And they have many other diseases. So as a result, the intake of the drugs and the absorption of the drug becomes very low, making them prone for getting multidrug resistance. Now, some important questions. Is there a susceptible stage for TB infection in HIV patients? The question is no. Answer is no. Now, we know in the phases of HIV infection, they have an eclipse phase, which lasts for a few days, and then an acute phase, which lasts for up to two months, and they go in for chronic phase. But there are many studies which have showed, although their immune status keeps uh, changing, what is important is that these patients are equally susceptible to infection with tuberculosis at all stages of uh, the disease. So acquiring TB in HIV is independent of CD4 T cell count and can occur in any stage. What is more important is they have found that there is a correlation to your interferon levels and your interleukin levels rather than to the CD4 level itself. But just a diagnosis is much better for us to make sure that you prevent them from getting, if you get a patient with uh, HIV, it is important to prevent them from getting uh, tuberculosis. And that is where the concept of isoniazid preventive therapy or what is now called the IPT therapy has come. So when you have a patient with HIV, it is much important to give them on a single drug of isoniazid for a period of 36 months. Now, this is a new concept that has come, and this has reduced the incidence and the mortality due to tuberculosis in many of these patients, especially children with HIV. They have to be given IPT. Otherwise, they are very, very prone for musculoskeletal tuberculosis and neurotuberculosis. Now, one of the questions may be asked, 
This is totally against the principle of multi-drug regimen in tuberculosis. By giving a single drug, are you going to make uh, incidence of drug resistance more? But this has been proved that if you start IPT before they get tuberculosis, this does not cause any increase. So you should not resist starting them on IPT4. This is very, very important. Now, the evaluation of a patient with uh, HIV and spinal tuberculosis on three fronts. One is you have to evaluate the stage of HIV. Second is the stage of the spinal tuberculosis. And then the health and nutritional status of the patient. Now, we all know that WHO has classified them into the stages of the disease. And if you have a patient who has still not had weight loss, oral thrush, and other systemic manifestations, and they are in stage 1 and 2, the principle is just treat them as any other patient with uh, spinal tuberculosis. The drug regimen, the indications of surgery, everything is the same in stage 1 and stage 2. Now, if you then the second thing that you will have to do is to carefully see the extent of TB spine. Make sure that you see that uh, you analyze the bone destruction, can all compromise neurology and deformity, and know that they all have multifocal uh, involvement, so you evaluate the whole spine well. Now, biopsy is a must in every patient who has got a co-infection. Now, it is because not only that you want to get the disease, but also rule out atypical mycobacteria, and many of them already have a resistance over there. So in these patients, every granuloma is not TB. It could be fungal. It could be some other disease. So not only a biopsy is must, but a culture and drug sensitivity is also a must. So never start therapy without these over here. Lastly, the evaluation of the patient must include his nutritional status because there are many studies which have proved the outcome of chemotherapy or outcome of surgery depends a lot upon the nutritional status of the patient and also rule out presence of diabetes, which makes over here. There are five studies which are proved around the complications of uh, post-operative complications, and you can see there is a wide difference when a patient has got HIV and no HIV. But the last study on TB spine by Dr. Govinder et al. from South Africa has proved that if the patient has got good nutrition and a good CD4 count, then the surgical results are not different. So it all the more makes it sure that you need to get these patients on good nutritional status over here. So counts who have got patients who have got normal and who WHO stage 1 and 2, treat them like uh, any other spinal tuberculosis. Now, who are the patients that you would start on anti-retroviral uh, therapy? Now, these are all the indications that have been shown, that these are all very well given in the books. Now you need to be... And it's very important that we involve a physician over here because there are so many antiretroviral therapy drugs and they all have large amount of uh, side effects. So before you do that, you need to be sure that you get a physician because once you start them, many of these patients can get a immune reconstitution inflammatory syndrome also because that is the patient gets better for some time and then becomes worse after some time. So you need to get a physician uh, Last three slides, surgical indications are most important. Surgical indications, technique of surgery, what implant you use, what kind of spacer you use, need not be anything different from an uh, ordinary patient with uh, uh, spinal tuberculosis. There is no difference in the surgical indication or the technique of surgery. And uh, we really don't know whether there is any specific role of surgery in decreasing the disease load and whether it makes it better. So everything else, planning of surgery, approach, method of stabilization, and use of implants are all as per over here. What has been clearly shown in the study is what makes the difference is to avoid comorbidities like diabetes and also uh, look at the uh, nutrition of the patient and then your uh, results are same. When you operate on these patients, make sure that you don't contract uh, HIV because this paper clearly shows that in areas where it is endemic, the surgeon has 15 times more uh, probability of contracting over here. So the management is not just on tuberculosis or HIV. You need to have a multi-strategy. Uh, uh, Look at the stage of the disease, the CD4, CD8 count. Nutrition of the patient is very important. 
and the nutrition, uh, neurological status of the patient is very important. Thank you very much for your visiting. Well, uh, thanks, Raja. Uh, well, this symposium is open for uh, discussion. We have.